So you've run almost 10,000 disk assessments. What do you think, first off, like some of these people probably not listening have taken the disk assessment so they can go to your website. On your website, we'll put the links below. Kind of get a breakdown and high level view of what the disk assessment is and then maybe some of the most profound patterns or shared characteristics of people's variables that you've seen after doing so many. Do you think are some of the most important takeaways that you've done after collecting that much data? <laughs> When I look at the assessment, the biggest things that I notice, so for those that haven't heard of the DISC assessment, DISC measures behavioral tendency, and it's based on the work of Dr. William Marston. There are four distinct categories, the D, the I, the S, and the C, dominance, influence, stability, and conscientiousness. And those four categories are often seen by most of the trainers out there that you're one of the four and it's whatever the high score is, and it's not how the profiles work. You are all four categories and you operate in a spectrum along all four. So that's the first thing is that they need to understand that the biggest patterns that that I've seen is that the DISC trainers that are out there, and there's a lot of them, they teach specific profiles are good or bad, and they teach all of the profiles from their perspective. So like the high D, high I, which means they're very driven, focused, they're outgoing, gregorious, they like to attack problems head on, and they're very social and outgoing. Those are the people up on stage. So if they see somebody who likes to follow process, they're not focused on results. They're so wrapped up in process that they lose sight of results. That's not true. That's how that high D personality sees somebody who operates that way. The person who operates that way, that would be a high C conscientious person, they're focused on quality. They want to make sure that they're going to get a result that's quality every single time. That's why they care about the process. And the D doesn't understand that. So you get all of these different personality types. And the problem is that the people who are up there teaching say, this is a good profile. This is a bad profile. And let me tell you what that profile is like. But that's not the case. It's stereotyping. It's basically saying you're in this category. And so I'm going to judge you from my perspective of what that category means. Let's kind of go into the entrepreneurship perspective with the mindset and disassessment. So from the real estate business, but I run a couple other businesses. A lot of people watching here are entrepreneurs, not all of them, but the majority of them. And a big part of them are in the real estate space. What are some of the biggest benefits by having this disassessment or also having potential employees or potential partners or team agents that would join your team? What are some of the business benefits that you've seen other people have getting this data and, and using this before they're kind of making those decisions to hire, bring people on team? work with potential clients or anything like that? Everybody has a unique frequency that they vibrate at. And it's not you or me that's good or bad. It's the interference pattern. And if I know myself and I can make myself a study, but the more that I can understand who you are, it tells me how I need to adjust so that you and I can get results together. It's about synergy. It's about understanding that there isn't a right or wrong. But if you're vibrating, if you're acting this way, let's say, for instance, you're a very decisive person and I need to slow you down. People who have that decisive nature tend to have a little bit of anxiety slowing down. So I need to let them know that, hey, you know, the intent is to be able to move as fast as we can. And part of that is to slow down just a little bit so that we can get there quicker. Does that make sense? I'll be like, yeah, that makes sense. You need to talk in their language. So the better you understand the people around you, the better it is. I actually have a certification program I just launched where I am teaching people how to cold read the disc profile. So you can shake someone's hand and in about 45 seconds know who they are. And the benefit of that is when you're sitting down and you're having a conversation with a prospect, you may or may not actually have their disc profile, but if you understand the spectrums and you don't need to be certified to do this, like if you just start to study this, study it in yourself and study it in other people. When I'm sitting having a conversation, I can recognize, Connor, who you are and I can tailor my conversation so I can talk to you in a way that makes you feel really comfortable and then switch over and talk to a different personality type. Talk to Kurt Shewell, who I absolutely love. Awesome dude. <laughs> yeah. Very different personality type. And I can have a great conversation with him. And it's not either personality, but you guys do have very distinct personalities types that are very different. Like him last night, actually. <laughs> yeah. Isn't he awesome? I love that dude. But it's like being able to have those conversations. It's like you switch and your personality just becomes a little bit different. And it's not about losing who you are. That's the other thing I hear all the time is, well, I don't want to lose who I am or how do I become a chameleon so I can become this other person? No, no, no. You need to know who they are so that you can find a way to be you in resonance with that other person. It's not that you have to become like them because the exact same doesn't work. You need to make sure that you can adjust so that you display who you are in a way that works with the other people. It helps increase rapport, it helps increase sales, confidence, better relationships, open communication, it allows you to deal with conflict, resolution, relationships, marriages, being able to figure out where, I, I work with kids. That's how I got into this, honestly, was I worked with a real estate agent's kid, and a lot of it was that the agent and the kid, there was a communication breakdown. They didn't understand how each other communicated. I've done, Tina Call had me on, Tina and Kevin had me on their podcast, they did a TV show, and I basically took their profiles and told them how they fight, and what they can do, and how they mitigate that by being able to talk to each other a little bit differently. And so it's the more you understand, the easier everything becomes because you become more fluid.